in your life in Jesus name amen merci beaucoup praise the lord to the man you did praise the lord everybody i say praise the lord today is the third day of the ministers conference for the professionals And I pray that everyone will receive abundantly from heaven. Sometimes you want to enter the door. You want to enter at the door. You didn't have the key. You thought you have enough power to push the door open. Then you stand at the door. You're pushing. You're turning. The door remains there. Somebody younger than you are. Somebody weaker than you are. Somebody inexperienced. And then he comes, he has the key. You've been there for one hour. Pushing and pulling. Nothing happened. And then he brought the key out. Put it inside. Open the door. You say, why? He's younger than I am. He's weaker than I am. And he just came. One minute. The door is open. Where you have been trying, pushing, pulling, I come to give you the key this morning. That no matter whether you are a man, you are a woman, you are younger, you are experienced, you are not experienced, the key. <laughs> are you going to receive? Yes. Amen. 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 Father, Père. well, thank you. It's not by force, it's not by power, it's not by energy, it's by your spirit. Come, we come humbly this morning to receive from your hand the key that will open the door to the hearts of multitudes in our generation. Lord, bless everyone today. Equip everyone today. Empower everyone today. Ambition everyone today. Set an open door before everyone. That nothing shall be able to close the door. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Today we continue in our messages on revival. The long-awaited revival. At our time is the last days. Our time is the latter time. And there is a promise of the Lord that He will raise up people. Giants in faith, champions in faith, that he will send forth 
and they will do the latter day harvest of souls. Evangelism everywhere. Power evangelism everywhere. Salvation evangelism everywhere. Going everywhere and touching lives and touching hearts. And this is the time when you exist in the kingdom. And you are here for harvesting. That's why I'm talking to you today. Harvesting in the last days. Harvesting souls in the last days. Through the healing revival. The healing revival. First of all, we start from the top. And our leaders, our bishops, our founders, all the leaders of the churches, we start from the head. And there is healing for everyone. Then we come to the ministers and to the professionals. And the healing stream passes on. And our ministers are well, sound, and healthy. And then we come to the people in the church. Charity begins at home. Power begins at home. The healing gift begins at home. And all our members will pass the healing virtue of the Lord unto them. And then we take that healing gift. That healing power. We take it outside the church. In every city and every town, every village. The healing gift begins to manifest. Not by one person in the nation. Not by only one person in a continent. But everywhere. The people of God. Ministers and members. They have the healing gift of the Lord. And when the world, when they see. That miracles of healing are taking place everywhere. They will want to find out the source. They'll want to come into the church. They say, we've never seen something like this before. How can we get into the source of the stream? We lead them to Christ, the Savior, the healer. And you are going to begin that in Togo here. And all over the world, from Togo here, we are going to transmit and transfer the power of God to heal everywhere. That's why we're looking at the subject this morning. Harvesting in the last days through the healing revival. We're looking at Psalm 67, verse 1. God be merciful unto us and bless us. And cause his face to shine upon us. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, that thy way may be known upon the earth. The person praying here was a Jew, an Israelite. And he didn't say that thy way may be known in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Judah, and in Israel. No. That thy way may be known upon the earth. 
that thy healing health may be known among all nations. Healing health among all nations. That's what the that's what the Lord wants to do. He doesn't want his healing strength, his healing power, his healing might to be known only in a locality. He wants that to be known among all nations. Here in our nation, there in the other nations, that the health and the healing that comes from Christ and also saves the soul, that that health, that salvation may be known among all nations. Look at verse 6 then. In verse 6, then shall the earth, not only Jerusalem, then shall the earth, not only Israel, then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. And then in verse 7, God shall bless us. We who come, the Lord will bless us. Look at the consequence of that. Our blessing is not localized. Our blessing is not only looking down at our territory. When God blesses us, he says, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. The blessing we have, the blessing we receive, is not only to affect our local family, that all the ends of the earth shall fear him. That's the reason we're here today. That we receive the key, his healing power, his saving power. The ability to take the healing stream out of one location and get it to the ends of the earth. Let's look at an example. Acts chapter 8. We're reading from verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them according to the plan of the Lord. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and almost uttermost part of the earth. All the apostles, they had the power. They kept the power in Jerusalem. But now persecution sends them out. But God, why will you allow persecution like this upon your church? What the people will not do voluntarily. Persecution drove them out to go and do it compulsorily. If we rise up immediately, and we say, here I am, Lord, I go. We will avoid and escape many problems and plagues and persecution. It is when we stay there, instead of going there, it is when we stay pure, instead of flowing on, that's when the persecution comes to jolt us and to move us and to drive us to the evangelistic field. And so Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And then in verse 6, 
and the people with one accord give heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. In verse 7, it says, For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with pulses, and that were lame were healed. Look at verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. Great joy in that city. There were seven of them. They were chosen to distribute food. Stephen, one of them, had died. It remained six of them. Only one. Philip, Philip went to Samaria. Where are the other five? If everyone will act like Philip, we will cover many territories simultaneously at the same time. But if people just come and learn, people come, the power is deposited in them. If only one Philip goes out with that power, preaching Christ, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, presenting the gospel of salvation to the people, it's only in that city where somebody goes, there'll be great joy in that city. Why didn't the other five remaining also go to that place and go to that place? The time has come for us to go. Where we'll go. And God will go with us. And great and mighty things will happen in Jesus' name. Harvesting in the last days through the healing revival. We're looking at three things here. Number one, turning and transforming the hurting with healing. Many people are hurting. That's why the world is responding to their hurt. Hospitals are springing up everywhere. Government hospital. Private hospital. Hospital by groups of people. Hospital by individuals. It's because people are hurting. If the church will have as many evangelists, healing evangelists, as the world has, many doctors, diseases will be cleared away from our nations. If the church is as visionary as the people of the world to heal and to lift up hearts, many people suffering will be healed and will be sound. If the church will manifest love that forgets ourselves and will reach out to the people who are hurting in the world, many problems will be solved. The doctors and the nurses and the hospitals and the people of the world, they have more love for the hurting than 
the church. Les gens, les médecins, les infirmiers ont plus d'amour aux malades, envers les malades, que l'Église a pour les gens qui souffrent. Those doctors study seven years, more than seven years, to be able to heal the hearts of the world. How many days do you spend to search the world and to become a healing evangelist in the world? Turning and transforming the hurting with healing. Number two, teaching the truth of healing for the harvest. Teaching the truth of healing. The power of God to heal. The promise of God to heal. The possibility with every believer, everyone that follows the Lord, that he can be a healing soul winner. Teaching the truth of healing for the harvest. Number three, transforming the triumph of the healer to his household. Look at number one. Number one is turning and transforming the heart in what healing. You see, Jesus knew the importance of healing the sick. He knew that will draw the souls of men and women and children unto him, unto the Savior. Look at what he said in John chapter 4 verse 46. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine and uh, there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at Capernaum. Just one man, a noble man, a leader, a ruler among the people, and his son was sick. Normally, a noble man like that, a ruler, a leader like that, may not come to the open air meeting, may not be interested in seeking for Christ. He's got money. Got contacts. Got con con it's got connections. It's got all the sand and the seed of this world. What's he looking for Christ for? But his son, precious son, was sick. Look at verse 47. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea, into Galilee, when he heard that Jesus came out of Judea, out of Judea, into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Even Jesus had to come out to be of any use to this man at Capernaum. No matter what knowledge you have, what power you have, what possibilities reside in you, if you lock yourself up, if you are not available, if you don't come out, come out to the place where the people can reach you and touch you. You will not do any good. But Jesus came out of Judea into Galilee. 
And this noble man went to him and besought him and said, please, please, come down. Heal my son. He's at the point of death. Look at verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Jesus knew that the people must see signs and wonders. The people of the world need to see the healing power of the Lord. Except, except, ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. We will see wonders. The world will see wonders from the church. In every street, people are sick. In every street, there is a church. And when their people are sick, they don't think about the church there. They think about the hospital far away. But we, we have the key to make the world see signs and wonders. And except they see signs and wonders, they will not come to Christ. They will not come to the church. They will go to their hospital and fetish priests. Turning the heart of the hurting with healing. Look at verse 49. In verse 49, the nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Look at verse 50. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Go thy way, thy son liveth. Jesus knew that the whole world was created by one sentence after another sentence. Let there be light. There was light. Let the waters gather up. Become the seas and the oceans. Become the seas and the oceans. And it was so. And Jesus knew I and my father are one. When he said it, it was done. And we are one. When I say it, it will be done. Like father, like his only begotten son. Here is what my father will say. My father will say, go thy way, thy son live it. I am like my father. And I say unto you, noble man, go thy way, thy son live it. Christ and the believer were one. That they all may be one with us. I in them, and thou in me, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The Father will say, Go thy way, thy son live it. The Son said, Go thy way, thy son live it. I am one with Christ. You are one with Christ. He says, go thy way, thy son liveth. If you believe that what you say in Christ will be done, it will be done. Amen. 
It's not, it's not your stature. It's not your voice. It's not your intonation. It's not the grammar. Sickness does not understand grammar. Sickness does not know whether you make a, a, you make a mistake in your conjugation or sickness does not know conjugation. Satan does not know grammar. It's your heart. It's what you say in your heart. If you say it and believe it, it will be done. And sometimes I listen to, you know, two preachers. One is preaching. But he's not well educated. He makes a lot of grammatical mistakes. But he doesn't know. And he's powerful. He's zealous. He's excited. And he's saying, I'm going to pray for you now. Even in that, he's making grammatical mistakes. And he says, stand up, I'm going to pray for you now. Your son will get well. God doesn't mind grammar. He only looks at your faith. And that person prays and heaven says, yes, there's a miracle. The other person is preaching. The other person is preaching. Dignified. Standing like a preacher. Grammar correct. Language perfect. But he doesn't have faith in the heart. Perfect grammar. Perfect conjugation. Without faith in the heart, nothing happens. Say it like Jesus will say it. Believe like Jesus will believe. That whatever I say, I say to that tree, that tree will dry up. Say it like, what will Jesus say if a sick person was brought to him? He will say, go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word. And the man believed the word. That Jesus has spoken unto him. And he went his way. Look at verse 51. As he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, Thy son liveth. What did Jesus say? Thy son liveth. He believed that. He went his way. And the servants came and said, Thy son liveth. Whatever Jesus has said, we will see it in your life. Look at verse 52. And he inquired, of them the hour when he began to amend. The, the man believed, but he was thinking natural and spiritual. Naturally, when you take pills or tablets or medicine, you begin to amend gradually. You take another one, you improve until eventually after some days, everything will be clear. Naturally, 
So he was thinking like, you know, prayer is like pills. When did it begin to amend? And he said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, not from the seventh hour, at the seventh hour, the fever fear left him. He didn't begin gradually to amend. When Jesus spoke the word, the fever left him. Now, turning and transforming the hurting with healing. Look at verse 53. So the father knew that it was at that same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth himself, believed, and his whole house. Is the, is, the, is the healing that turned the heart of the man and he was convinced and he had faith in Christ that this healer is the savior himself believed and his whole household believed that is the result of healing through Christ. When the apostles took over, the same things happened. Acts chapter 9, verse 32. In Acts chapter 9, verse 32. And it came to pass, as Peter passed through all the quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Leda. Verse 33. It says, And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed Eight years he was bedridden, he was sick, and there was no possibility for him to be healed. In eight years, he was sick of the palsy. Look at verse 34. Peter said unto him, How does healing take place? How does miracle take place? Peter said unto him, How do people get healed? Jesus said unto them, How do you heal spectacular healings? How do they take place? By the word we speak. By the word we speak. Now, we know the words we speak. If you believe yourself when you speak, if you make that a habit when you speak, and whatever you say, you always believe, I said what I meant, I meant what I said. It will become a habit. You speak to Brother Samuel, you mean what you say, you say what you mean. You say, you say to Mr. Sickness, and you believe what you say, you mean what you say, you say what you mean. You speak to a satanic spirit, and you say what you mean, and you mean what you say. Anything you are talking to, 
anyone you are talking to. You say what you mean from your heart. When Jesus spoke to the blind, he believed what he said. When Jesus spoke to the fig tree, just the word, he believed what he said. And if you will say to this mountain, and mean what you say, and say what you mean, and not doubt in your heart, whatever you say will be done. Peter understood. When I understand, that God has given me the ministry. When you understand that the Lord has given you the ministry, you stand in his place. You stand representing him. And you say what he would say. And you say it confidently, persuasively. You believe it will be done. I tell my boy, I tell my boy, get up. Bring that chair here. I don't have any doubt in my mind that my boy will get up and go and bring that chair. But you understand my boy? He has free will. He can disobey if he wants to. But I just believe that my boy will not disobey. Go bring that chair. Now, I speak to sickness. Sickness does not have free will. Sickness does not have the possibility of choice. It's like the chair there does not have any possibility of choosing whether to be moved or not to be moved. My boy who has the liberty to say yes or no, he obeys. The chair that has no liberty to say yes or no is what I say that will happen. And so Peter said, understanding, I say what I mean, I mean what I say. And Peter said unto him, Ernest, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise, make up thy bed. And the man, he couldn't do otherwise. The word had come from Christ, from heaven, unto Peter, the human being, and it's come to this person, he has to obey. And he arose immediately. What's the result of that? Turning and transforming the hurting with healing. Look at the next verse. Verse 35. And all that dwell at Lida and Saron saw him and they turned to the Lord. That's what the miracle healing power of God does. Point number two. Number two here, we're looking at teaching the truth of healing for the harvest. We're living at the time of the harvest. The time when we'll harvest the souls into the kingdom of God. And there was uh, one problem with the Israelites in Jeremiah chapter 5, uh, verse 24. 
neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. They didn't understand the favor God had done to them. They didn't take hold of the privilege the Lord had given them. They didn't make any difference between harvesting time and sowing time. And the Lord said they should have understood. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. That's what he has reserved for us. The appointed weeks of the harvest. These are the last days. And if we're going to harvest any soul into the kingdom of God, this is the time. And he reserved the weeks of the harvest for us. Do I understand that? That God has reserved for me the appointed weeks of the harvest. Why then am I saying I am too old now? Do I know more than God? He has reserved unto you the appointed weeks of the harvest. Why do I say I'm not educated? And then God who knows my level of education said he has reserved for me the appointed weeks of the harvest. Some people say I have family challenge. Me that had a family challenge, how can I go out and be telling other people? But he has reserved for you the appointed weeks of the harvest. Stop every other consideration that negates the reservation of the weeks of the harvest for you. But please understand, when the prophets of the Old Testament only use the word week, they don't mean seven days. When Daniel used the word week, he was actually talking about years of sevens. And the Lord has reserved for us the weeks of years of periods of harvest, harvesting of souls. And when we realize that, we learn the truth of healing for the harvest. In Mark chapter 3, we're looking at verse 14. Mark chapter 3, verse 14. And he ordained the twelve that they should be with him, that he might send them forth to preach. He appointed them, he called them. He wanted them to be near so as to learn, so that he will teach them how to preach, what to preach, what to do to make that preaching effective. Look at verse 15. And to have power to heal sicknesses. And to cast out devils. Now, how did he teach them? There are many ways of teaching. 
you can go to school, you can stay in the class, and the teacher can write on the, on the board, and then you can take notes and learn and learn and learn. That's one way of learning. Many people who learn that way, they do not do what they learn. Our children go to school. They learn physics. They learn all the connections. They come back home. They pressing iron what which was smoothing our cloth as problem. The boy having a distinction in physics at school cannot repair that pressing iron. That kind of learning, it works, but not always. The mother wants to teach her daughter how to cook. He doesn't get her before a screen. I bring it, my daughter, this is how to cook. You take all these ingredients, you wash clean them, you prepare the pot, you do this, you do that. Uh -uh. Mama doesn't teach how to cook like that. My daughter comes and she, mama, washes the pot, cleans all those things, cuts them in pieces, puts this first, put this next, and then soup comes out. It, she does it the second time. She does it every day. And the daughter is just watching. And she is learning. Christ brought those disciples together. He was to teach them to have the power to heal. And the authority to cast out devils. He brought them near. How did they learn? Number one, by observation. They saw him. That's how he speaks to sickness. Rise up and take your bed. And go back to your home. And Peter said, Aeneas, rise up. Arise and take up your bed. They learned by observation. Number two, he taught them by demonstration. He wanted to raise the dead. And he picked Peter, James, and John. And they went with him into the place where the daughter of uh, what Jairus' daughter was dead. And he spoke the word. And the child rose up. Demonstration. And because of the way he taught them, he had the demonstration, they had the observation. Consecration. I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. And they saw his consecration. He was teaching them. He was modeling for them how to use healing power to make the people of the harvest time come up into the kingdom of God. Submission. I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. I submit to the will of my father. That's how he taught them. Separation. 
John the Baptist that came before him did no miracle. He didn't say that's my forerunner. He did no miracle. And so I'll follow my forerunner. He knew the calling of the Father upon him. And he distinguished himself by what he did. And they were learning. And then by utterance, by declaration. Master, if you can do anything, help us. And now he declared to that man, if you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believes. It's when you bring all those things together. You see the teaching ministry of Christ in practical things. There are many things in life we learn. There are theoretic things that you can only think about, only meditate on. You can only turn it in your mind, in your brain. Theoretical things. There are practical things. Practical ministry. And I say, way that one is taught, and you imbibe that, you embrace that, you internalize that, and it comes. How did Moses teach Joshua? Calling him to a separate class? No, no. Come. Observe. And come. See the demonstration. Come. See the declaration. You see it, it enters into you, and then you begin to say, that's why I'm here, that's what I'm to do. I learn, and then I go and practice. How did Elijah teach and train Elisha? This is how you do this. Write your note. This is how you do this. Elisha did not have any notebook. Ob observation. Demonstration. Manifestation. And the deed that was done. That's how they learned. And when you look at all the people in the Bible that manifest their power, it's not by what they wrote, it's by what they observed. And then when they observed deed, they did it. It says to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Look at John chapter 14 verse 10. In John chapter 14 verse 10. Believest thou that I am in the Father and the Father in me? He himself believed he was in the Father, and the Father was in him. And that's the, the foundation of talking like the Father, of saying it like the Father, of seeing it like the Father, and of demonstrating and doing it like the Father. The Father in me, and I in the Father. Do you believe that Christ the healer is in you and you are in Christ the healer? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me doeth the works. Thank you. 
That's what he wants us to learn. He's teaching us the truth. That we need to understand the Father is in me and I am in the Father. The healer dwells in me and I dwell in the healer. And the words I speak, they are not my words. They are his words. Anytime he saw the sick, he will not pass by like that. He will heal that sick person. And anytime I see the sick, I allow him to speak through me. Do I believe that when I speak to that sickness, do I believe I am not the one speaking? Do I believe that my word will not do anything? But he that dwells in me constantly, he doeth the work. Do I believe that Christ will speak every time in me? Oh, some people say, I'm sorry, I should have fasted seven days. My fasting for seven days would open the mouth of Christ in me to speak. But now, since I didn't fast seven days, he will not speak. Mm -hmm. That's not true. No, 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 pas la you cannot close the mouth of Jesus if he is there. Tu ne peux pas la de Jésus il est Your fasting doesn't open the mouth of Jesus. Ne va pas la the de Christ Jésus. that lives in me, he speaks the word. Qui vient en moi, lui qui la Pastor, are you telling us that fasting is not important? It's important. It's important. But I'm saying that it is not your fasting that makes Christ arise and act. Peter and John were going to the temple at the hour of prayer. They had not fasted up. They had not prayed up. They had not done anything. They, was, they were going to the place of prayer. Before they got to the place of prayer, they saw somebody at the gate of the temple. We have not fasted enough. Oh, we have not prayed enough. Okay, well, go into the temple of prayer. After praying, praying, and praying well, I hope that man will say that they will come back to him. No. They stop there. What do we have? We have Christ living on the inside of us. We have the power of the Holy Ghost. The anointing to heal. We'll go to the place of prayer. We'll go and thank God for what he has done. But now we need to act. And Peter said to the man, Look on us. He knew something was about to happen. When you get to that sick man, you know something is about to happen. Silver and gold have I none. Why are you then waiting here for me? Because I'm not going to use the natural, I'm going to use the supernatural. Money, natural. 
silver natural all those tangible things we can take and touch and distribute natural your stamina the way you stand natural your physique natural the sound of your voice natural you can talk with the natural gift to the man. You cannot talk with the natural gift to the sickness, to the demon, to the problem. That one has to be supernatural. But what I have, I give unto thee. Oh yes, I have that before even getting to the temple for prayer. I have my hand before I get to walking on that machine. I have the gift before I get to the person I'm going to give something to. That's what he wants us to realize. What I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ, the Jesus of Nazareth, the one that does all things perfect. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Nobody ever spoke to that man like that before. And the man is 40 years of age. And he was alive in Jerusalem when Christ was alive. Nobody ever brought him to Jesus. They always took him to the door, to the gate of the temple. And what Christ had not done because the man had not come when he was on earth, his disciples, the body, the arms, the hand, and the representative of Christ, they now did what Christ would have done if the man had been brought to Christ at his time. And that man got well. And you will get well. And the people you go to will get well. He said, but the father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. And we say that Christ that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. It's not how you feel. It's not what you feel. As I'm talking. Do I have brain? Yes. I shake my head. Do I feel the brain there? No. As I'm walking about, do I see my eyes, my eyeballs? No. No. Do I have eyes? Do I see? It is not what I feel, it's who I have. You may not feel that anything is there. The name of Jesus has been given to you. The presence of Christ is there with you. When Jesus gave you salvation, he didn't say, are you a man? Okay, I'll give you salvation. Are you a woman? Uh -uh. Whether man or woman, he gave us salvation. When he, when he gave us his name, are you a man? Get my name.
That woman, I'm sorry. He gave the man and the woman that powerful name. You're a believer. He has given you the name. In my name, they shall cast out devils. If they did any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They will take off serpents and throw them away. They, they, the man, the woman, the believing man, the believing woman, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If somebody tells me something, I don't know whether it's true or not. Okay, I'll test it. I'll go and do what he said I should do, and that this will happen, I will prove it. He says, I can lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I'll prove it. And I lay hands on the sick. What happens? They recover. Go and prove it. When we go out of the meeting today, look for somebody who is sick. I want to prove what he has told me. Look for somebody having a challenge. I see one. I, and then, uh, as I'm going, I'm not saying, will it, will it not? Prove it. That's what the farmer does. That when you plant, it will grow. He doesn't go to university and see the process of germination and the process of bearing fruit. Anyone educated, illiterate, put that seed on the ground, cover it up, go your way, don't think about it. When you come back, in a few days' time, look at what you planted. It's already coming up, it's going to bear fruit. Go and prove it. He has given us his name. And he said in my name, they'll cast out devils. They will heal the sick. And they wait for everywhere. Preaching the word. And the Lord walking with them. He is ready. You get up. You go and do it. You'll see miracle in your ministry. Look at verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. Very late, very late, I say unto you. He that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. This is your day and your time. You are the one you will do it. We're, we're looking at point number three here. Transmitting the triumph of the healer to his household. Transmitting the triumph of the healer to his household. Look at this man. He been working all his years. He's got large bank account. He's got a lot of resources. Now, he's built this company and that company. And he knows he'll soon be leaving 
our territory here. And he calls his household. And he says, I'm not going to be here on earth forever. Whether I like it or not, I have to go to my home beyond the sky. All these things that I've got, if I don't do something about it and write my will, everything will go into the hands of the government and people I don't know will eat everything up. And so he brings all his household together. He's a generous and loving and just father. He, he loves all the children. And his wife that is still around as he's going. And he distributes everything now into their hands. And he says, you get yours. You get yours. He comes to the youngest in the family. Say, come here. He picks him up and kisses him or kisses her. Said, I'm sorry, I have to leave. Get your own. And everybody in the household, they got their own. What do you think of Jesus? He was to go up. He said, I have to go because I go to prepare a place for you. And when I finish preparing the place for you, I will come again. I will take you unto myself. If he is so generous to go and prepare mansions for us in heaven, but what he has over here. He distributes to everyone. And no one is left out. Today you receive. Amen. When Moses was to leave, did he just sneak away? He called Joshua. And everything he had, he said, take. All you need to guide and to lead the children of Israel, after I'm gone, take your own gift. And when Elijah was to leave, did he just go like that? Ask me what you want before I be taken away from you. And he gave him what he wanted. And Jesus to all his disciples of that time and of this time, he has made available for you and for me everything we will need in ministry. And he said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, I'll give it to you. I want, so, I want success. It's done. I want fruit. It's done. I want the healing ministry. It is done. He gives the gift to everyone without partiality. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 12. I'm looking at verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with that. Every man has the gift. The sick people are in the world. And the Lord gives you the gift. The healing gift. All you need to do is to understand you, are, you have it already. And the name of Jesus has been given to you. 
go in the name of the Lord. You will succeed. The sick will be healed. Power will flow from you. Because you have given to every man to profit with them. You will be profitable to the kingdom of God. Profitable to the, to the harvesting of the last days. The spirit of the Lord is now upon you. The gift of the Lord is now within you. If you close your mouth, the water to quench the thirst of everyone is in your bottle, but you close it up and you hold it yourself and we're all thirsty and the water we need is in your hand and you close it up, open your bottle and go to the people. You need a drink, 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 drink and you will satisfy many lives in this country and beyond this country. If I want to give you something, and I stretch my hand and say, take, and you fold your hand at your back, and keep on sitting down, and you don't come, and I'm stretching out my hand, all the day have I stretched out my hand to a nation that will not respond. That's why the Lord said, because you reject what I give, I turn to the Gentiles. What is yours, you will get. Everything we spoke about this morning, you will get. When are you going to get it? Your gift, when? The healing, when? The power, when? Rise up and get it. Rise up and get it. It's there for you, my brother. It's there for you, my sister. Don't say, I've never done that. You will start today. Healing gift. Healing power. Healing possibilities. It's yours. Christ dwells with you. His power dwells with you. His authority is given to you. And the name of Jesus that can never fail has been given to you. I have. I have. I possess. It's living on the inside of me. The Jesus who will never fail. The man that has Jesus, you cannot fail. The woman that has the name of Jesus, you cannot fail. It's not your posture. It's not your grammar. It's not your physique. The name of the person that dwells inside you. He is there. He is there. You have it. Power, you have power. Utterance, you have utterance. Say to the mountain, be thou removed, and it shall be removed. You are a favored son, a favored daughter in the sight of your father. He doesn't think negative about you. 
He doesn't think impossibility about you. He doesn't think weakness about you. He loves you and has given you his only begotten son. And the son has given you his mighty, powerful name. You will do it. And you'll be a prophet to the kingdom of God. Prophet. Prophet. Prophet to the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. I praise God for every one of you. You will, you will go out. You will go and prove what the Lord has given you. Before the final prayer, let me just tell you this. We are all thirsty. We want to drink. Wonderful. I see somebody coming in. And he brings water in. And he serves the water. And then he doesn't serve you. And you keep quiet. You see him giving the water to everybody. And he doesn't give you. Maybe he doesn't like my face. Maybe he wants me thirsty. And leaves me like that. Why don't you talk? Why don't you pull a shirt? I am here. What have I done? Where is my water? Everybody will have. Everybody will have. God is not a man. God is not a man that he will pass you by. My brother, this is your time. My sister, this is your time. You are having your own. In Jesus' name we pray. It's for everyone. Where are you? It's of that hand. It will fill you to overflowing. The, he, the healing will start in your own body. And then you'll carry, you will carry that healing power to the sick. After the meeting this morning, Go look for somebody sick. Go and prove what you have got. And lay these anointed hands on them. 
they, they will get well. Your hands up again for anointing, for power, for breaking yokes. Father, in Jesus' name, the God of love, the God of power, the God with no partiality. Your sons and your daughters, your servants are before you today. I'm asking, Lord, the healing virtue will come into every life in Jesus' name. Sickness will not cut short your life. Sickness will not cut short your ministry. Sickness will not make you impotent and useless. Healing power, healing strength, healing virtue, and time to everyone right now. It is done. You are well. You are healed. You are delivered. And now, the strength of the Lord upon your life. Go in this strength to the world around you. Go heal the sick. Go deliver the oppressed. And as you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. As you mention the name of Jesus, that name will heal the sick. Become a healing harvester. Become a healing soul winner. Everywhere you go now, signs and wonders will follow you. Miracle and healing will follow you. The anointing will never dry up in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.